So you got your game. You got a few levels, right? We're level one. And if you see, I got my levels folder. And we can open up and we got level two, which is pretty cool. We got two different levels. And maybe you got tons of more levels in your game. I don't know. So we've all been there where we're like, oh, we'll just make a script for our level. We're just going to call it level.gd, right? Make your script. And you're like, uh, we're right. Uh, export variable level number equals uh, one. We'll just set by one by default. And then everyone does this. And they're like, okay, um, now I'm going to increase this level number for each of our levels. So this is level two, so I'm gonna increase this to two. And then for level one, I set that to one. This is annoying though, because for every level, you have to increment that level number. And then it, it is nice because then we could just use this level number and it's nice and easy and simple. And we just add one to it to go to the next level and we just parse the next uh, file down here. If you don't know how to do that, we're actually gonna get into that in this tutorial. But if you have done this, this is terrible. This, is, this sucks because every time I make a new level, I have to remember to increment the level number variable. No one has time for that. So throw this, throw the script down the drain. We're not using it. This is garbage. Remove that script. Delete it from your files. I don't want to see it. Get out of sight. I'm going to show you guys a way better way of doing it. It's going to be completely automated. You don't even have to worry about it. Everything is just going to work. All you need to do is focus on making levels and everything will just work out of the box. Pretty freaking nice. Okay, let's get to it. Now, if you look at most games with levels, there's usually a way to traverse to the next level, whether that be a door, whether that be a castle, there's something. There's something there. Your player hits it and they go to the next level. So make sure you have something in your game that does this. So you can see, I play my game. You got your standard looking level, but we actually got our next level portal thing and it's pretty obvious. It's yellow and it spins. You're like, oh yeah, that's the next level thing. You go into it and it takes you to the next level. Um, Currently, it doesn't take me to the next level because it hasn't been programmed to do that, but we're going to set that up in this video. Are you guys ready? For the most epic system ever. You're probably thinking, man, this guy's really hyping up the system. It's gotta be pretty good. So let's actually get to it. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you can detect when your player hits the next level. If you don't know when your player's hitting the next level, how are you supposed to switch the level? Kind of hard to switch levels when you can't even tell if your player's hitting it, you know? This is gonna be different based on your project. I'm gonna try to cover all the use cases, but just know that maybe you shouldn't just copy me directly. You gotta look at your project and make sure you're doing it right. Now, now, what do I mean by that? Well, you can see that my player is this character body, whatever Godot 4 calls it. Um, it's a physical object that moves around. Um, my next level is an area 2D. So if I go into my next level scene right here, we gotta make a script for our next level because we gotta be able to detect when the player hits the next level inside the script and do all of our fun level switching madness. So make your uh, script by hitting that little scripty icon, save it wherever you want, hit create, delete all of this because we're not using it. Make sure you leave the extends right here because that's needed for functionality things to work. And now we got the script in, we're gonna go back into our 2D scene. I know this is kind of confusing. You're like, well, we just made the script not doing anything with it yet. Don't worry, we're gonna add stuff to the script. Uh, 2D scene. Now you want to make sure that your next level has an area 2D. That is required for detecting collision. So whether that be your root node right here, and, and the root node is the topmost node of the scene, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you have an area 2D with a collision shape attached to it. And this collision shape is just the area where we detect our collisions. Add your area 2D if you haven't already. Your collision shape, you're gonna need those. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to detect our collision. And I'm sorry if you've already done this and you're like, man, this guy's taking forever, but we're gonna set this up right now. So go to your node right here, but next to your inspector, make sure that your next level area 2D is selected. And you're gonna see all your area 2D signals. You got area entered and you got body entered. This is really important. Area entered is when you're colliding with another area. Body entered is when the area collides with the physics object. Two separate things and you gotta know which signal you're gonna use. Now this is gonna be different for everybody's game. In my game, my player is a physics object, so I'm gonna use the body entered signal. In your game, maybe the player isn't a physics object, but what you wanna do is make sure that your player has an area 2D attached to it if it's not a physics object. I'll show you guys right now. If I open up my player scene, here's my fancy looking player right here. He's so happy. You can see right here that my player is a character body 2D. Um, It's a physics object. It's able to collide with the ground, the walls, whatever. So that means that our area 2D can detect our player right out of the box. If your player isn't a physics object though, what you're going to want to do is add a child node, add your area 2D, add your collision shape, and you're good to go. That way we can actually detect if an area is colliding over this area. So I'm going to go back to my next level scene and I'm going to connect the right signal. Now remember, you're not copying me. You got to make sure that you follow what your game is using. So if you're going the area approach and your player has an area 2D inside, use the area entered. 
If you're using a physics object like me, use the body enter. Now with your signal selected, you want to hit connect and then you want to specify which node you want to connect it to. So connect it with your node that we just added the script to. So whether that be your area 2D, whether that be your sprite, doesn't matter. Just connect it to your topmost node that has our script. And then you can just leave the method the same. I'm just leaving it as on body entered and then hit connect. And there you have it. We got our body entered signal. Now our area 2D knows when a physics object collides with it. There's one more thing that we need to do before we actually switch levels. We need to make sure that the thing that we collided with is a play because I think you can imagine if we just detect, we're like, oh, if any physics object or any area 2D collides with me, go to the next level. That could be pretty broken. Let's say that like a crate falls on top of the next level thing. And it's like, okay, next level we go. And it's like, I didn't actually touch the next level. And it's like, nope, we're going to the next level. That's kind of broken. We got to make it so the player is the only one that can go to the next level. So we need to detect if either our physics object or our area 2D is a player. In order to do that, go back to your 2D scene, go inside your character scene. So this might be different for your game. So don't just blindly follow me. If you got your physics object, just like me, you can follow along. If you don't, and you're using an area 2D, what you want to do is follow along, but make sure that you select your area 2D instead of your physics body. So in order for our next level to identify what it collided with as a player, we need to add a group to our physics or our area 2D. I'm using my physics body right here. I'm going to make sure I have that selected. If you have an area 2D in your scene, don't select the top most node, select your area 2D instead. And your area 2D looks like this little dude. So make sure you have that selected and then go over to your node tab right here. Go over to groups right next to signals. And we're going to add our player group to our physics body or your area 2D based on what you're doing. I'm just do capital P player and I'm going to hit add. So now you can see that our player group is added to our character body 2D. When our player collides with our next level, our next level will detect. It'll be like, okay, this character body hit us. We're going to check its group and its group is a player. So since it's a player, then we can change our level. So if we go to our next level scene and we go into our next level script, we can set that up right now. I'm going to write if body dot is in group quotations player. And I'm just going to write pass because we're not going to write anything else. Again, this is another thing you shouldn't copy me on. I'm using the body signal, right? Since it's a physical object. If you're using the area signal, you got your on area entered. Make sure that instead of saying body, you write if area dot is in group because we're detecting an area and not a body. Again, just pay attention to this. This is the only thing that's going to change between this. The good news is that for now on, everything is going to be the exact same. Doesn't matter if you're using the area 2D or if you're using a physics body, everything's going to be the same. So it's going to be great. So we've successfully detected that a object has hit our area and we've detected that it's a player. Now we could do the magic part and switch to the next level automatically. But first you should make sure this is working. So we're just going to print collided with player because you want to make sure that this is all working before we get to switching the level. That way, you know that it's our object detection signal or it's our group that's not working. So you can play the game and I'm going to collide with this little next level thing. And I should see in my output, it says collided with player. So that's pretty awesome. It looks like it works. If you didn't get this message, then either there's an issue with your signal or there's an issue with your area or your physics body not being in the player group. So just make sure you double check those. And once they're both good, you should see this print statement. I'm going to delete your print statement. We don't need it anymore. Now let's go on to the fun part. We're going to go to the next level. I'm going to maximize my code because things are about to go crazy. First thing that we're going to do var current scene file. We're going to get tree dot current scene dot scene file path. So this grabs our current scene and it gets its file path. And we save that inside this current scene file variable. Now, if you guys need a demonstration of what that does, I can go in my 2D scene and let's say that we're in our level one scene. Get tree dot current scene right here. What that's going to do is that's going to grab the root node of our scene. So that's our top most node, which would be level one in this instance. So that's all we're doing. We're grabbing this top node right here in our scene. And it's the same for level two. We're grabbing level two and this one grabs level one top most node. Current scene topmost node level one or level two and then we grab the scene file path so if you go on your file system this is where you saved your scene so our level one level one dot tscn level two dot tscn so it's going to grab this whole path to that scene file so it grabs our topmost node and then it realizes hey this is its own scene this is all saved in our file system and it goes and grabs the whole file path to this level one after it grabs our topmost node same for level two it selects level two and it's like oh here's our path this is where it's saved now if i go back to my next level code and if you guys want to see this in action, you can just say, hey, prints current scene 
file. We can hit the play button. I'm going to hit the yellow spinny thing. And it's going to say, hey, here's our file path inside the levels folder, level one.tscn. You don't have to put all your levels in one folder. I mean, you can have them scattered all around your project. It's not going to matter. It's going to find the path regardless where you saved it, which is really nice. So that makes the system really flexible for really whatever setup you have. I'm going to close my game and we can remove these print statement because now we know what this current scene file is. And then we're going to write another variable, variable next level number. And we set this variable equal to current scene file two int plus one. Basically, we're grabbing our current scene file. Remember, that's our file path. And we're converting that to an integer. Now, an integer is just any whole number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. It's a whole number. Now it's going to grab this whole string and it's going to be looking for the number. And it's like, oh, one. And that converts this entire string to one because one's the only number in here. And then once we convert it to an integer, we just add one. So this whole output right here would give us one. And then we're just adding one to it. So what's that going to equal? Well, one plus one, that equals two, which is our next level. We can see this right now. If I just print it, print next level number, we could play our game. And uh, if I hit the yellow spinning thing, you should see too, just like we said. So this is actually really great and really robust. Um, it does have a flaw though. If your folder has a number in the name, that might mess it up when it tries to convert this to an integer. You, you probably don't have any numbers in your folders for your levels, I, I can imagine. As long as you're not an absolute madman and add numbers all over folders, you're gonna be totally fine. Okay, so now that we got our next level number, we just need to get the file path to our next level. So let's do that right now. Variable next level path equals quotations res levels level underscore plus the string of the next level number plus dot tscn so i know this is a lot there's a lot going on and there's one thing you have to make sure you change based on your project right here this is going to be different i mean there's a small chance that you're you, you actually named your levels the exact same as me but you want to make sure this is consistent with how you save your levels in your project and we can actually figure this out right now if i go into my files right here you could see that everything is saved inside the levels folder and each of the names are the same up until this one part because that's our level number. So we could consistently say that every single level is going to look like this string. It's very consistent. This might look a little bit different. Like if you didn't do a underscore between your level number, you might just have like level two or even you might not even have a level name. You might just write two, you know, level one dot TSCN, two dot TSCN, or they'll all be in the root folder and you'll just have to do something like this. And then the only thing that would be the same is this RES part. So whatever your naming convention is, just make sure that you reference it correctly right here based on what it looks like. Now with that out of the way, what's this madness out here? So this next level number is an integer, right? We converted this string to an integer and we added one. Therefore, this is a number, right? This isn't a string. So we have to convert this to a string. That way we can add it inside of here. So that's all this does. STR, that just converts this to string. So it would look something like one instead of just one, you know, something that we can actually use. The add just basically concatenates our string. So whatever this turns out to be will actually just be right here. So if this is two, for example, this would just be right here. It just gets added. That's what that does. Same for the dot TSCN, because this is our file extension of our scene. We have to make sure that we add a file extension at our end. If we don't, it'll just look like this. And it's like level underscore two. And it's like, I, that, that's not a scene file. I don't know what that is. So you want to make sure it has dot TSCN because that's our scene file at the end. So it actually knows what we're talking about. Now I'm actually going to improve prove this line just a little bit. I'm going to make a constant up here called file begin. And that's just the beginning of each of our level files. And this would be the only line that you change. And I'm just going to paste that variable in right here. That way it just makes it a little bit more readable. I don't know. Maybe it's more confusing for you. If this is harder to read for you, you don't have to follow along. I just think this is better. Um, it's a constant because we never change it. It's always going to be this path. And let's actually test to make sure we're getting the next level path correctly. So I'm just going to say print next level path. Now that we got our print statement in, I'm going to play our game. I'm going to hit our fancy yellow box and it's going to say, hey, levels level underscore two dot TSCN, which is awesome. That's what we want. OK, this is amazing. Now we got our next level path. We just need to change the scene. So instead of saying this print statement, I'm just going to delete that and we're going to write get tree dot change scene to file next level path. So we're grabbing this text path that we just got right here and we're switching the scene to that file. Let's actually test this out and make sure everything works. I'm going to hit the play button. I'm going to go to my spinning cube door and it takes me to the next level. That's pretty freaking sweet. And what's great about the system is it's fully automatic. You don't have to worry about changing variables based on which level you're at. It's all done for you. And that's just another thing off your plate when you're making levels, which makes your life just a little bit more simple. And there you go. Fully automatic level switching system. That's pretty awesome. If you guys 
enjoyed the video, you should check out my Udemy course. Um, I'm working on this big, massive Udemy course. It's for complete beginners. It teaches you guys how to make a completed game that you can see right here. It's based on Sea Defender. It's an old Atari game. It's pretty cool. The goal of this course is to get you guys to the point where you can make your own games because many tutorials fail at getting you to that point, me included. Many people often get stuck in the loop where they're just watching tutorial after tutorial after tutorial and not actually making their own projects. They're just copying other people what they're doing and not actually learning. So the point of this course is I want to teach you guys how to learn. I want to get you guys to the point where you guys can problem solve, break things down and make your own video games. This course isn't out yet, but it will be very soon. So if you're interested, scroll down to the bottom of the page. I have a link in the description where you can go to this landing page. Just drop your email right here, hit subscribe. I'll let you guys know when the course comes out. You'll also get notifications when the course goes on sale and you'll get exclusive course sales that you wouldn't get if you weren't on my email list. So I highly recommend you follow the email list. Anyways, if you're interested in more videos from me and supporting me, this is the best way you can do it. Just drop your email right here and you'll learn how to use Go.4, which is really awesome. Anyways, I'm excited for the future. Let me know what you guys think, what you guys want to see, and I'll see you guys in the next one.